With today's digital technology, creating photography has been easier and faster than ever. You can take just about any consumer grade camera, go out, point, click, shoot, and you've got an instant image. This is a great asset for your website. But if the images aren't formatted properly, it can also be the worst asset of your website. What does that exactly mean? Well, photography on the internet works really well except if you don't format it properly. If you format it improperly or you leave it just the way it was that it was shot on the digital camera and you don't do any formatting to it, then you're going to get extremely slow downloads. As you can see, this image is painfully slow and I'm running 5 megabytes worth of bandwidth on my DSL here. On, uh, this is an 8 meg image and the way you can tell is you can right click on the image, hit properties, and it'll tell you right here how large your image is. Even though it's only 400 pixels wide, that's what the browser sees. That's not the actual dimension of this image. If I look at the actual dimension, if I come over here, if I grab the properties and I look at the actual physical size of this image, you'll notice that it is relatively large. So what has happened is, is with HTML, this image was told to only display at 400 pixels wide. But because the physical size of this image is much larger, and we'll take a look at that here, the physical size here is 3,000 pixels wide. It's still 8.5 megs. This is a huge download. 56K, 20 minutes to get this down to uh, a visitor's a browser. Now, if I go back and look at that and I hit reload, it's going to reload rather quickly because there's a cached copy on my, on my uh, laptop. But even at 1.5 megabytes worth of bandwidth, this is a 45 second download for the average Joe out there. That's way too long you should have your page set so that the whole page takes less than 45 seconds to download. And then when you add two or three of these images to a page, then you're, you're just killing yourself. And the people aren't going to stick around and watch it. So what are we going to do about this? So the first thing that we need to do is we need to identify what images we have on our computer that are actually going to be too large for our website. And there's a variety of different ways to do this. A lot of people will have a different uh, methods for storing images on their computer. I'm going to show you a few methods that include um, a, a Windows Explorer, uh, Photo Mechanic, Adobe Lightroom, and Bridge that comes with Adobe Photoshop. So let's start with just identifying the images that we have and, and identifying what those images file sizes are. So you notice here this is Windows Explorer and in Windows Explorer we can actually see by clicking on them, the file sizes, the dimensions, some tags and things like that. You can also change the view and go to details and then get a list of the different file sizes. Now this is telling me really quickly that if we're using these images on our website, especially all, there's what, four of them here? So this is telling me right out the gate um, with about oh, 12, 12 and a half megs worth of files that this is going to be nearly impossible for these four images to be on one web page and a visitor to have a pleasant experience. Now, this is just one method. There's a couple of other methods, and let's let's take a look at them. Uh, Adobe Lightroom is one of my favorites. It is pretty simple to use. It's a standalone product that does cataloging as well, which means that you can keyword your images, you can add tags to them, you can put them in different collections for different websites and different uses and categories and things like that. The other nice thing about Adobe Lightroom is it has a develop module which will actually let you do some basic modifications to the image before you save it to the to the web. Clean it up a little bit, maybe remove some dust spots or change some of the colors around a little bit. Makes the image just look a little bit nicer. The another option is is if you own the Photoshop suite is Adobe Bridge. Adobe Bridge has uh, a sim a similar interface but uses Adobe Photoshop and I believe maybe even Adobe Elements as its primary editor. So you have all of those tools available to you. But again, it's it's a rating tool. It's, it's a way of cataloging, adding keywords, and things like that. The one that I use mostly is called Photo Mechanics. Photo Mechanics is a real simple and fast tool. It was originally developed for 
photographers uh, with the AP, the Associated Press, so that they can go out, shoot photography, get it tagged, do some minor cropping, and then send it along. But over the years, they've morphed it into the consumer world, and it has become an extremely powerful tool, very fast, very quick, and very easy. These tools will help you get your images off of your camera, um, your SD cards, digital compact flash, USB drives, and so on. The other thing is that you shouldn't limit yourself to just the photography that you can take. There's a lot of places on the internet where you can purchase stock photography and even get stock photography for free. iStock Photo, Getty Images, these are all great websites where you can buy stock photography and use them on your website. But a, a place that I found on the internet that I thoroughly enjoy is called Stock Exchange. And while they do sell a few of their images, the bulk majority of what's online is free and available to us to use on our websites. So let's take a look at Stock Exchange real quick. Stock Exchange is a place where amateur, semi-pro, and pro photographers can upload their images and allow them to be used in a variety of different ways, from print media to brochures to your website. The nice thing about this is, even though they have some images that are available for purchase, the bulk majority of them are actually free. So, so let's see if we can find uh, an image for our website for this demonstration. I'm going to come over here and I'm going to search for people. And here are my results. And as this loads right here, these are going to be your premiums and these are going to all require some kind of a fee. Uh, I, I typically look for the free web images so the first thing I do is close off the premiums don't need those so now that I have my list of images here there's a variety of different people I, I went ahead and made it broad so I, I'm getting all kinds of, of clip art as well but let's see what we can find here okay here's a nice photo now what I look for is I want to make sure that the photo is of high resolution so that I can actually uh, crop it and manipulate it if I want to. If you look over here, this photo is actually only 1,200 pixels wide, where this one's 4,000. So this looks like a good candidate. Let's see what we have here. So now, how do I get this to my hard drive? Well, it's pretty simple. I click on the image, and it's going to load the full size image. What we've been talking about here for the the last five minutes, and this is back to look how giant this image is again. So. In order to get it to my hard drive, all I do is right click, hit save picture as, I find where my project folder is, and I hit save. Okay, now that's on my hard drive. It, it'll show up in my different cataloging programs available it's going to show up in Bridge. Adobe Lightroom is a little bit different. It's there. It's in the catalog, ready to go. And it's on my hard drive. And again, this is a large file. This is 4.8 megabytes. So we have to format this and get it ready for the web.